What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Creative Blockman podcast. You guys know who I am already, hopefully by now. Um, today, I have a guest that I'm, I always say this, I'm really excited to have on the podcast, but it's it's kind of true. Like, I am always really excited, really, like, passionate about the guests that I have on the podcast. Very fortunate that, in in a sense, this the person that I have on today has made... It's like one of those things where you meet somebody for like a short amount of time in your life and they make quite a big a- impact on your life. Oh, wow. That, that's kind of <laughs> happened to me. This person's made me like think about TCB in a whole different perspective. You know, it's really like, <laughs> just like seeing the presentation that um, I received on one, like one brand, it really made me like sit back like, damn, shit. Migs, you can do a, like a lot more. You know what I mean? Like get your shout shit out, in order. Shout out, shout um, out. Yeah, what we met? What is it? Maybe like two, or three weeks ago. Um, the oh founder <laughs> of uh, We Are Blacksmith, uh, co-founder, founder, co-founder of All of the Block above. Boy and Friends. <laughs> All of the above. Yes, sir. Yes, um, sir. Obsidian Champagne as well. The man behind that brand, um, a brand builder, entrepreneur. Dabbles in the art every now and then, <laughs> and arts in general. That's, that's actually a new one, by the that, way. That's new. Um, it's none other than Diogo. Um, thank you for being here, bro. Like, thank you. Thank I you always for say this me, to my guests. I really appreciate it. And thank I hope you. I can kind of project that and really show you that I actually really do appreciate you taking your time coming here today. Um, yeah, it means a lot to me. This is not just a, a thing that's like, ah, oh, it has to get done or this. It's like, it really does mean a lot to me. So thank you thank for you. taking the time. Thank dude. you. Thank you. And for those who don't know, it's officially the first one. So hopefully to the first of many. Definitely. So, yeah. yeah, no, definitely. Dude, with the, with the stuff that you're doing and like I said, with the whole presentation that you gave me on like Block Brain Friends and stuff and just the way you launched it and <laughs> it's inspiring. Like it really is inspiring to see that, you know, somebody can put so much passion and so much energy behind I don't want, I'm not trying to play it down, like behind a, a figurine, <laughs> behind yeah, a yeah. figure, but it's not just a figure, it's yeah. a brand, it's, it, it's something it's a whole bigger, universe. You know what I mean? So, so to touch on, there's a lot of things I know that we can talk about today and I'm sure this podcast can be oh, probably like three hours long. <laughs> um, we've got time, we've got time. <laughs> we've got time. I don't know if we've got light. <laughs> yeah, problem. actually. Cape Town, hey, yeah. Cape Town and light. Um, as you guys can see, this is not a green screen. That is Cape Town. That is Table Mountain in the background. Um, it's it's important for us to also like, you know, try to be the most artistic. That's the way I'm I'm labeling this. I want to be the most artistic podcast in South Africa. Well played. Um, I think we definitely are onto something here. Yeah, set so. designed by yes. <laughs> none other <laughs> than the man himself, Diogo. Um, but let's get back to it. Yes, sir, I, I want to yes, touch on <clears throat> Block Boy and Friends. How did that start? Why did that, you know, let's start with how. Um, how and why? So, okay, so the how is in my line of work, um, you know, always, I guess it's a form of natural resource, always looking at, you know, up and coming artists, talent, so and so. And in this case, I came across C's page um, and I saw a design of his uh, particular design. It's called the Block Boy Demon Slayer. And it's, you know, taking. I love Japanese culture and just sort of discipline and mindset, I guess. Um, and it had sort of had this anime style of an animated character. Hey, there's our birds. Yep. An animated character <laughs> um, that he did in Japanese art style that was also street fashion and just like had this cool look to it. So literally DM'd him and I said, what's up, my brother? How are you? And I said, do you do prints? And he was like, no, I don't. And I just responded, you do now. And mm. it sort of started <laughs> the conversation. Um, Funny enough, I still don't have that print actually <laughs> for myself, my, for myself. But we'll It'll frame come. that very soon. Yeah. Um, and we just started the conversation that I was hosting an event, maybe about an hour, an hour, sorry, a month or two uh, after that encounter. And it was an event during COVID actually, mm. where we did this event as my business, a sort of a networking thing that we brought like-minded people together, where it was everyone who's successful in their own right, not just my industry. I just went, the people that I know, and you know, in COVID, we couldn't have the events and stuff. Uh, yeah. So it was also me being a bit like, we can make shit happen. Um, also, a lot of my clients and people needed an out. Yeah. So I literally just brought everyone into the same room. But the, the common don- denominator was everyone was successful who was there. Mm. So I had people like, you know, my boy, Imran Christian, mm. one of the greatest yeah, creators yeah. from, you know, 
displaying his, him, then right, for our, <laughs> displaying his artworks that you know he was graceful to to allow us. And then I s- said to C, I was like, bro, I'm doing this event. I'd really like to put your stuff there. Come through. Um, we had Joey Rasdeen was the MC. We had Jay nice. something and the guys. Jay actually won the PS5 that we gave away. <laughs> Literally when the PS5s <laughs> dropped, yeah. Legend. We also like were able to secure some. So it was also part of that thing of like, you know, it was very negative and scary energy at the time that we like just wanted to show that there are still people who are doing it and are still positive. And it was just a, a place for inspiration, I guess. Mm. Um, and funny enough, Monkey 47, the okay. gym guys actually yeah. came through to the craziest, uh, yeah little display anyways the point nice. is after having that uh, you know see at the event his stuff sold out immediately nice. Nice. and it was almost like a aha moment that mm. um you know there's something special over here and just how the universe works i happened mm. to watch a show on netflix called you know the toys that made us very awesome show because mm. i've just you know growing up I, I love toys cartoons and all that and i happened to watch the teenage mutant ninja turtles episode and when you see that, I realized, wow, we have our own Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, there's something. Yeah, because mm. I had seen, you know, like what C had created and what he was doing. And I was like, it, it, just, it just made sense. And yeah, everything you know, just clicked in the moment. Just clicked. And, and, yeah. and, and, you know, the vision has it's been clear, you know, since day one type mm. of vibe. So I think that's also an important part to, you know, possibly a question that's going to come up later that, when something just makes sense in your head and you can see it, go for you it. You gotta keep Do going it. for it until you know, mm. you just make it happen. And that's yeah. a beauty of what this brand has allowed me to is actually take something from a picture or concept to physical form yeah. into a business. Yeah, um, there it is. Yes, sample <laughs> over there. Um, and yeah, I mean, even with the merch, you know, dropping soon. Yes, just like the website, the online store. But um, yeah, stuff like that. It's just really taught me that you know, as a brander or a marketer. To a certain degree, you know, it's very strategic and conceptual. That has taught me that almost go the full circle of mm. now we creating the story, telling the story, creating the product while handling the entrepreneurial retail side behind it. And mm-hmm. I don't know if you know, it's not very often that you can do something and actually build something from scratch as well. In yeah. a day like today's day and age, mm. um, and then it just happens to be creative at the same time. You know, with the yeah. art side, which I think is really what makes it really cool. So yeah, yeah I hope that answered the question. <laughs> no, it does. And uh, I want to go back a bit. I think it also, it goes back to that whole thing of, you know, you have that gut feeling, just follow it, do it. You know, like it's, maybe it's not exactly executed like perfectly right now, but if you keep on working and keep on pushing it, it's going to get there. You know yeah. what I mean? Eventually, one way or another, it's gonna happen you know that's 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 the thing you've got to just keep pushing and keep yeah right it's, it's like, like like you said now you're dropping the site you know you've i'm sure you've had issues <laughs> along the <laughs> you see like you know you've had the issues and stuff like that but now you can sit back and be like oh shit like we were saying earlier like this is actually happening yeah like it's gonna be live it really right? really is a cartoon so, you know, try to explain to someone, I make a cartoon. You're like, no, it's a lot bigger what than that. What do you that. mean you but make cartoons? Yes. <laughs> yeah, say that to your Portuguese granny. <laughs> oh, yo, bro. Every, yo, let's not even, that's a whole other conversation right? now. Right. Um, so uh, that's one thing that I, I've kind of, I personally have struggled with in the whole creative block, et cetera, et cetera. It's kind of just balancing that whole creative side and entrepreneurial side. You know what I yeah, mean? And yeah. the whole business and stuff like that. How like how have you approached that side of it? You know what I mean? So like, so I think because you can't just be creative, you know, you yeah. can't just be creating, creating, creating. It's it's look, it's very few people um can be a bit of both. Yeah. Naturally in today's day and age, given, you know, apps and online stores and you know, all of the cool all of the tools that are available, it has made it easier for creatives to have a bit of a you know, the the business side and the and the balance. But um I think at first you just got to be honest and that's what creativity teaches us as in mm. be honest with yourself in terms of what am I good at and what am I not. Once you know that, then you also know, okay, cool. I want to be a full-time creative, but what, I, what, like, what I'm mm. also bad at is what I need to focus on. Yeah. And certain things that, you know, we call it the must-haves or they have to be done. Got to focus on those things because at the mm. end of the day, <laughs> we all need to live. We all need to eat. Um, yeah. And, and you know, money or finances in what we do is essentially a tool 
And yeah. for you to mm. build and to do what you need, you you have to have that tool or that resource yeah, of course. to be able to to you know also take your vision or your creativity, you know, and bring it to life and and, and expand that depending on how big you want to go, you know. Mm, mm, mm. But you know the, the the balance part is quite difficult, um, especially when it's being self funded. Yes, you know, that's that, yeah. that plays a big role. Trust me, I know. The other side is also, you know, as much as everyone wants to work with the big corporates and the cool stuff, it's like you also need to be able to be geared to be able to handle working with them, mm. which means delayed payment terms, yeah. you know, those sort of things that really puts you under pressure. Yeah, like, of course, you know, definitely. living hand to mouth or month to month. And, yeah. You know, it takes people, and especially on the creative side, a long time to get out of that or to forecast for that, you know. Yeah. So, with the honesty and you know all of those things also try keep and be realistic you're mm. not gonna you know go from zero to a million overnight like you yeah, know, some, course, some you can steps. don't get me wrong but mm. like just be a bit realistic um mm. and be honest with yourself to be like i know that's not what i'm good at but i gotta focus on that like yeah, and i exactly. say this to all creatives look after your taxes yeah 100 <laughs> percent. look after your tax register definitely. company and pay that yeah. Don't worry about your twenty five percent as a freelancer. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you have to. That's just the <laughs> way. Like, that's how you're gonna build that brand. Like, if you really want to stick to being, like you said, a freelancer, and you just want to do the occasional job here and there, like, cool, that's fine. But if you really want to grow, I think as a person or as a brand, I'd rather say that um, you're gonna have to eventually register a company. You know, pay your VATs on whatever invoices you get in. You know, X Y Z. Um, you know, if, if it's, I think also if you're not good at that, then you also need to understand like, okay, maybe I need to branch out and ask somebody that is good at that. So 100%. I can keep creating and then this person can help me with that. Even with like, like I was saying earlier, with the honesty side, then, mm. you know, it, when you eventually get to a point of, yes, you can afford mm. and, you know, these services are very, very affordable in today's day and age and yeah, you know, with with all of these apps so i was about to, i was literally about to say that i'm sure there's an app that you can just definitely you know definitely I mean? you know so pay a subscription every month and they'll do it yeah and and we are living in a digital ecosystem right now and you know economy so mm. guys most things can essentially be done and especially you know as a as an individual or someone who has a big vision in mind mm. you know um, like in this case you know you're trying to be a bit more of a, of a platform mm. Definitely, it's, it's it's like to keep that balance that you were speaking about, just do. Also, yeah. very often we like, oh, I don't know if it's ready or good enough to go. Should we do it? Should I do it? Mm. The beauty of this thing is there's no right or wrong way. Yeah, It's just about, you know, you never know how you're going to connect with an audience or with a something. Yeah, of or course. in a case like this, I mean, what you say, three weeks kind of feels like it's been longer. But the it point does, is, yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's also natural integration, and I believe it's going to go even bigger now, a lot quicker. Mm. But it's also because you, you just did. Yeah. You know? So sometimes yeah, you also just have to put yourself out there. You know what I mean? Like you've got to, you've got to be creating and just putting it out there. Like it's, you know, yeah. if you create and just it can sit on an SD card for <laughs> ten months, that's not going to help you. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's not going to help you. You've got to put it out there. It's really that simple, you know. Um, how did this all kind of start with you? If we take it back, how did like where where did this creative side start? Was it in oh. film? Was <laughs> it in no. So it's actually it's actually a crazy story. Um, I got into the creative side um, just by chance into the agency world because I mean I did study um, I did study. Uh, I did study, um, <coughs> sorry. No, no, take your time. There's no rush. No, chill, chill. This is a very relaxed podcast, guys. Yeah. Don't forget that mountain <laughs> behind us is not fake. Um, it is Table Mountain. Katie, please relax with your beer there in the background. Okay. This is <laughs> Give me a blowjob mouth. Like, <laughs> 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 we are not going you know um, to be sexual with <laughs> the mic. <laughs> Um, but anyways, <clears throat> yeah. So how did how did that start? So how I got into the you know the sort of the creative space. It's an interesting story, funny enough, because did my degree. Um, actually coming back from overseas playing football. Football was the life before. Yeah, we're gonna get into that. Uh, now. Yeah, no, we'll definitely guys, get into that. Uh, okay, let's we know <laughs> pivot real quick here. <laughs> so obviously it, it's okay, not obviously, but funny enough, myself and Diego kind of. 
I wouldn't say know each other, but we we know the similar people. I'm friends with people, he's friends with, et cetera, et cetera. And everybody, even my brother, my brother is like, yes, I told him, well, I'm going to Cape Town, I'm going to do a podcast with Diogo. Um, and then I showed him a picture of you and he's like, yes, this is actually a really good soccer player. Eh? <laughs> and I can play. Um, Jason as well. Uh, okay. Jackson Mazibuko, that's what we call him. Uh, Shout Jason. Out Jason. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's like, yeah, he went to... He went and he played fucking uh, soccer for like Muritmo and everything. But anyway, yes. we'll get into that now. now. Um, cool. So football started. So yeah, football came back to, you know, I had to study and, you know, did the standard BCom at UJ. My cousin was studying finance and my friend. So, you know, we did that. And then, yeah, somehow just, I, don't, I can't even tell you how, what the story was. But I just one day landed up going to the marketing department, switched my whole course to the marketing side, did my nice. honors. And... It was just so natural that, you know, it, it actually showed me more of the entrepreneurship side, you know, growing yeah. up Portuguese family, you know, all in the shop and all of that sort of stuff coming from retail. Mm. You know, it's just been natural to us to understanding, you know, yeah. profit margins, costs, yeah, you, know, mm -hmm. you know, all of those sort of things and, and to think a little bit and, you know, what to do with your money mm. and, you know, also the value of working for something to, you know, you put yes, something yeah. in, you're going to yeah. reward out, yeah. in this case, your bank account. So. Yes. That was always a natural side to me, but the marketing and the understanding of brands, I think I picked it up from the store, from, you know, being young, the shelf packing, I guess. Yeah. I used to like, and there's an the OCD side of me, maybe that's where- Please don't know. tell me you really like packing shelves. I, used, I love packing shelves. It's it like therapeutic <laughs> that's thing, to me, that's right? That's my thing. <laughs> so, I'm not even saying this. Like, bro. You can literally ask, um, if you come to any of my stores, oh, you can ask my staff what I'd- those labels must be in line. Right. Things must be Well, it was, it was that. And, and to me, it taught me very quickly, like, what are your fast sellers? What brands are strong? Yeah. What, yeah. you know? And, and to a certain degree, people's behavioral patterns, because I even knew, you know, the kids like, they're smaller. So they like the stuff at the bottom of the shelf and those things yeah, that yeah. like, you just learn by packing and like being, oh, it looks nice. And then even taking into account color, yeah, color palettes yeah, yeah. and all of those things that you know the way you display it you it, can make different exactly displays. and you can make a pyramid this is, yeah 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 and then the, 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 with the displays you like the reps come there and do their thing and you're like ah come on man yeah, i can right. do this better <laughs> <Give laughs> you know 10 minutes i'll show yeah, you <laughs> right right <laughs> um and there was also that thing of like it was kind of my way of you know helping you know my dad and and and, and the family business that if it was well packed it sells which means we make more money Mm. And I just understood that concept for a long time. So having yeah. that entrepreneurial with the sort of the creativity was always sort of like, I think, naturally ingrained in terms of the looks of things. And I also would always look at billboards and be like, I wonder who wrote that and why? Mm. Or like, you know, why did they choose that specific picture? Yeah. And that taught, like, taught me and led me to the agency world of like, it's not the brand, it's an agency who comes up with that. Because yeah. always you'd be like, oh, Whoever works for Coca-Cola must have a fun job. It's like, yeah. no, it's Whoever the agency. Or yeah. Ogilvy or exactly, <laughs> the Ogilvies. Um, yeah. And funny enough, at Varsity, we learned about Ogilvy and David Ogilvy, you know, yes, the yeah, yeah. father of advertising. And it was just like, oh, it must be cool to be able to work there. And true story is the agency I end up working with. And even that story is crazy of, you know, one of my friends, he's one of my best friends right now. Um, but there was a job for a project manager at Ogilvy, one oh, nice. of these short term, yeah. one month, possibly three months stints. And I was, you know, I'd finished, got my honors at, at, at UJ, didn't realize, you know, how well it actually was preparing me. Was working for 3Ms on a grad program, became a permanent after six months. And then this just out of nowhere, this project manager opportunity came up at Ogilvy. And at the time, shame, I was earning nothing, you know. It was quite funny yeah. <laughs> I still have that paycheck like, yeah shit. <laughs> couldn't even afford my rent that's how well I was being paid but anyways you know we had we Shout had a vision Ogilvy. <laughs> no no I wasn't Ogilvy yet uh, Ogilvy okay. was almost a savior because uh, okay. from the grad program at 3M um I was gonna get paid almost double okay so I was really like wow Ogilvy. then I was like yes I have rent and groceries <laughs> you sorted for them. but that's We're living now no petrol no petrol <laughs> uh, I'll make a plan don't parents worry. no parents are still like uh, I well, remember because you know, they didn't really understand at the time because of the family business. So uh, being the first one who went out, it was that, are you sure you're doing the right thing at Varsity? Because you can't even afford your own things, but you're like, where to, you know, this is yeah. their way of supporting, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah, like, so having that, that creative flair and going to an agency, learning up being Ogilvy, that 
one month became three months, which actually became nearly four years of, of working there, just opened my mind up to a whole other side of almost like the strategy behind creativity. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And when you have that insights, understand how they deconstruct brands, what brands stand for, the narratives and all of that, you almost like upskill yourself in business because naturally at heart, you're always thinking, but how do I sell? Or how can I sell? Mm. Or, you know, how can I remunerate from? Yeah. And being there and also, you know, working with huge brands, people forget that. Yeah. Everyone wants to work with the big dogs, but it's like, it takes a freaking village, yeah. you know, like there's a lot. Yeah. It's a big operation. There's, yeah. there's like there's some serious. Yeah, yeah, it's like, not like one know? dude that writes some copy and no. the other dude that uh, puts a strategy together. No, it's like it's teams of people yeah, that get that stuff done. Exactly, exactly. So, well, sure, we'll get into AI later, but uh, hey, the AI, point is, woo. the point is like, you know, that's that taught me like, I guess, the strategy and the conceptualization of things. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, I eventually got to the point of wanting to start my own business. You know, I think the entrepreneurial and the retail side sort of came out. That was natural. Uh, yeah, I was about to say that was that was like a natural progression. It was going to happen, I think, regardless, eventually. Yeah. You know, just it, from your family background, business, you know, I think. It was there, but it was. in you. Regardless. One night was also, this, you, you got to have a bit of applied pressure sometimes to, to make yeah. a decision because I'm also like, I was 25 at the time and it's like, okay, cool. If I was in the family business, I could have most probably had a house, a mm, car, this, you know. Yeah. Over here, I'm still living month to month, freaking, you know, all of these like, yeah, it's cool, I'm in Joburg, but is it like, is it feasible? Because we also have to grow up and we also have to yeah, be like, 100%. you know, do you want a family? Do you want the things that you know you can get just mm. by? So you also have to make a decision in terms of yeah, like, cool. Yeah. So I was just like, hey, it's not like I haven't done well. Yeah, I've connected with people, networked and done so well. So I, I gave myself a timeline. Mm. I said, I'm going to give it a year. Then at least I can say I tried, whatever, you know, close yeah. the book, fine. And and sticking to your timeline, I guess, is quite important. But yeah, um, yeah. and funny enough, about three months later, I um, just connected a friend of a friend. They were actually working in the, um, in the club scene and they had just started shooting some music videos and somehow it was sort of taking off. And I said, cool, I've got the corporate background. I feel like this is strong enough and the level is good. Mm. Um, and and we had like access to all of the, you know, at the time, all of these artists who essentially ended up becoming, you know, all of your biggest artists in the country. And, yeah. um, you know, from, from your Casper and your vest to, you know, the late Ricky Ricks and stuff. We were all there sh creating and shooting their content at the time. That This would be music videos, right? Yeah, this was the okay. music video space, but it allowed me to connect. Mm them and brands who brands had, had had budget, but they wanted to connect to culture. Of course. So we were like, cool, product place in the music video can go so much further. Mm. I'll show you how to do a, um, you know, how to do um, like use it as media and product placement. And yeah, it really sort of was taking off. Um, so there. can I just take this call take quickly? Uh, baby. Live, live calls. He really uh, is at the yeah. podcast. <laughs> I'm in the podcast, but What's up? That is Table Mountain. Um, um, I don't know. We sort of... Katie, you good? In the next sort of hour and a bit. Why? What's no, up? I want a beer. I'll never say no to a beer. Yeah, you can bring me a beer. Are you guys enjoying the podcast? If you are, please, guys. It's really simple. Just like, subscribe, okay. all that stuff. To give you guys a little bit of okay. background well, of you what we're going to be... Ready. Okay. doing at the creator blockman pretty soon is we're gonna be demonetizing if you want to call yes. it what happened something went off uh, okay like a cool client stuff <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> no nah, don't be sorry it's like a, i always said i always said to all the guests i'm like i just want this to be chilled i want it to yeah, be a conversation yeah. between two people that's it <laughs> like it's most Guys, we're human beings. We receive phone calls that we have to take. Relax. Yeah. Press like, subscribe. That is Table Mountain. Don't forget. <laughs> um, I know. It never gets old. Funny uh, enough, you know. It doesn't. <laughs> As a Joe Burger, I've only been here for two years. Yeah. Can con can confess have been converted. Nice. Can confess it. Yeah. Yeah, Cape Town has that thing, dude. It's that spiritual creativity. That's what I call it. Yeah. Um, it really has that vibe on you. you no, know? it does. Yeah. 100%. So, 
you can yeah. see it like and you can feel it as well definitely feel and it you can definitely the, feel the, it the best <laughs> advertising schools i studied at triple a yeah Joburg. yeah very um, cool and when it came to that uh, it was l'oreal brandstorm we knew already like ah uh, Ogilvy Cape Town's winning, oh no, not Ogilvy, Triple A Cape Town's winning. <laughs> and I still remember I had this like, argument, not argument, but it was like a debate. You know, you know, Portuguese father, he's, yeah, his boy tells him, no, he wants to go study in Cape Town. Ah, uh-huh. study in Cape Town, you. All you're going to do is go there and fuck around and <laughs> maybe come home with a baby. You're not hey, going nowhere. You're staying here. Yeah, yeah, sure, they hit you with that one. Okay. You know what I mean? And I was like, and I just finished my marketing degree. Yeah. So I got my BA in marketing and communications and I wanted to do copywriting. You know, the creative side of, of me. It, you know, I always, oh, even when I did strategy and stuff like that, I was always like, yeah, this copy or this art director is like kind of shit, like. You know, like, let, let me do the, my own art direction. Yeah, yeah, the, let's see what On they. the presentation and stuff like that. And a lot of my lecturers would be like, who did the art direction on this? And it was like me. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like, it's quite nice, cool. Nice, nice. Um, so I wanted to do copywriting. Little did I know, and I won't lie, I pat myself on the back for this one. So my grammar's quite cuck. You know oh, what I mean? Okay. Like, it's, it's not on point. Yeah, no, I, sorry, I heard your grandmother. I was no, like, my what? grandmother, she's an OG. Yeah, I was going to say, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. it's not really, and me at the time, I was like, okay, cool, I'm, you know, I can make, a, make my way around it. Anyway, did it, did fairly well, because the way I approached it was kind of different. Um, I said to myself, I'm not going to, we're going off topic, but enjoy guys. <laughs> um, I'm not going to present any of my, my radio ads or TV ads or whatever. I'm going to create them. So I'd go home, I'd get a mic, you know, create them, add sound effects. Like I do, I'd literally go to Varsity, connect it up to the thing, and I'd be like, play. And okay. literally hear it. Sick. And okay. everyone was like, oh shit. Like, Can we put that in this edit? It's the same? Yeah. Add, add a clip of that? Or oh, if something? I can find, yeah, definitely. That would be what cool. What I'll do is I'll create, give me a brand. <laughs> okay. Give me a brand. No, really, give me a brand. I'll, I'll do a 30 second radio ad. Mm. Give me like two weeks. Okay, two weeks. Sure. Yeah, I was okay. going to say today's energy, maybe I have three days, but. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, pal, I've still got to go to the shop. I have to nah. capture invoices. Hey, I think, think, think Clyde <laughs> no, cares about that. You can even be having a baby. Deadline okay, is deadline. <laughs> Clyde is different, please. Give me some time. <laughs> but I'm um, okay. Wait, let's just think of a brand. Actually, Curveball. Because they don't exist anymore. Joshua Door. Ooh. Okay. You're welcome. I got you. <laughs> what's the, what's the date today? Fifteenth, thirtieth of November. Done. Back, you guys are my witnesses. Katie's my witness. I'm a man of my word. I'm gonna do it. How long? Thirty seconds. Yeah. Okay. Thirty seconds. Shop in two languages. Yo. We <laughs> are <laughs> <laughs> uh, English and uh, Twang English. <laughs> nah. Anyway, so we let's get back to it. what what we were talking about. We're talking about how you got into, let's just say we are blacksmith and how you actually you oh, saw, yes, yes, got sorry, to the sure. point where we were chatting quite about a, Ricky Rick long, and, and videos long. and everything. Yeah, yeah. so uh, let's just say was working in the music video in the cultural space. Um, at the time, you're just working, didn't even realize the amount of impact we were actually having and learning because it was also my way that I connected and met a lot of the creatives in the creative industry because mm. one thing we always did was we would always build a team for the project of like, this is the best stylist, this is the best set designer, this is the best director or whatever. Mm, and sorry, you dude. Katie, yeah? can you just check the the lamp? That thing's about to go onto Table Mountain, bro. Just the wind. I'm worried about it. I don't want to break shit. My deposit. Did you deposit? <laughs> no, I didn't. Oh. <laughs> Shout out Airbnb. <laughs> I don't, is it affecting? No, nah, I'm just worried that it falls over. But anyway, you, yeah, ooh, everything is moving now. <laughs> Cape Town, this is Cape Town for you guys. The joys of shooting in Cape Town. You think everything's going to be great. The sun is out. When, when next thing, thing, it's... Should we take it away? Yeah, yeah. take it away, dude. Um, next thing, clouds come in. There's sirens for tsunamis going off. Preparing the... Preparing the bomb shelters. 
Can I have a family meeting now? Now. <laughs> okay, back at it. Let's <laughs> do this. <laughs> Hopefully with the win. Yeah. Anyways, I think to cut a long story short is a lot of it was natural progression that from my agency days at working at Ogilvy, I the entrepreneurial side had come out and I decided I needed to go independent. Yeah. Got involved in a production company, you know, where we were predominantly shooting the music videos. And it was my way of, I always found that there was a bridge between creative artist and talent um, and, and brands. Like almost, I wanted us to be the bridge or wanted us to have the reputation of being known as the guys as mm -hmm. we can bring you brands. Mm. We still this day, we, <laughs> we still we hold the reputation. Brands. Yeah, like I get calls all the time. Can you? I'm shooting a music video. Can you give me 50k or 100k? I'm like, I can, <laughs> but it's it's like there's a lot more to it. You know, mm. we've we've kind of moved forward where we now conceptualize and work with brands direct on like through the line campaigns. But mm. the point is, um, it was natural progression of my strategic conceptual thinking in the creative space as you know, figuring out how do we get enough budget or the money to do the projects that we want or work with the clients. You know that have these cool projects yeah and and as time of you know naturally in the beginning i was always like the finance guy of like mm. how much money and the budgets but over time and years of being on set and being around in the environment i started seeing things and learning and being like okay if i had to do it how would i do it yeah and yeah one one day i just said let me give myself the opportunity so i said i've built this business have your reputation let me just tested. And it was a Revlon, funny enough, a Revlon nice. ad, a small one in a studio that I was like, and I spoke to, you know, my business partner at the time of, um, <clears throat> in, in, in the creative space, I was like, let me just do the treatment of what I know. Let me yeah. try it. I'll present to clients and all of that. Did that and client was like, this is exactly what I was thinking. And we went, we shot it and I was like, oh, this was actually quite easy and quite, quite effortless and natural, you know? Mm. Um, and ever since then, yeah, the creativity side has really, really like kicked off. Um, and, and, and here we are. And that's what you could say is kind of the inception of We Are Blacksmith. Yeah. In a sense. Um, yeah. Totally, totally. Like okay. it, was also, it was also a means of, you know, as a network-based enterprise, we wanted to be a platform for all creatives to come together mm. um, because we really are about, you know, bringing people in the right brands together. Yeah, and being an, and being a part of or involved in that, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, it's just such a cool space to also meet, constantly meet new people and constantly yeah. expand. Yeah, and you know, also you meet like talented people. So, only you know talented, I mean? well, not only talented but people, predominantly, but yeah, predominantly talented people. And that, for me, like that, that just thinking about it is like that's so fucking cool. It's you definitely know? not boring. Can yeah, say exactly. that. Definitely, you know? yeah, like it's not boring at all. You know, you get to meet artists, you know, from every kind of. And a lot Medium, of them, if you want yeah. to put it that way, visual totally. artists, musicians, this, this, that, you know, like it's, it's really cool. It's a nice thing to expose yourself to on like a daily basis. You know? And that you can constantly learn and elevate mm. and, you know, evolve yourself. Yeah. That's the other cool side about it is that, you know, you know, the whole saying steal like an artist or borrow <laughs> like an artist. <laughs> um, I mean, and it's totally valid, but to mm. the point of it's inspirations, what you yeah. can do. And, you know, and the, and the beauty about the art side is most people are actually willing to help and learn. Mm. I mean, and teach and yeah, share definitely. knowledge, mm. you know, um, it's almost like this camaraderie or this thing of because I can see you have a genuine intuition or you you coming from a good place that you really want to learn. Mm. Generally, I'll, I'll, I'll speak yeah, to you yeah, and definitely. a simple coffee or conversation. Yeah, like you're doing this right, you're doing this wrong. Correct. Maybe try this. Like, this is my opinion, you know, like, yeah. And that's how I feel like the way it should be. It's like we were saying earlier about a conversation I had about art, like pieces that I bought from, from an artist and long story short, I had to take them off the site. And, you know, that was for me. I even said to the artist, I was like, thank you very much. Like, I've learned something today. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I, I didn't know. That's how it worked. And yes, you know, yes. I appreciate the fact that we had that in, like as much as it, as it was a bit hostile in the beginning. <laughs> um, I was like, I'm not trying to cause beefs. Like I'm trying to get in this industry. I'm trying to learn about it. Um, so yeah, with like all due respect, I'm going to take your work off. And I still said to him, thank you. You taught me something mm. today. You know what I mean? yeah. Which is, it's, I think that's the way it should. There is, I mean, there is a side of, I mean, 
the emotional value that's you know in the attachment of you know that creatives put out it's it's literally an expression of the emotions which is cool yeah. you know, and it's like you also learn a lot about yourself i guess through other you know emotionally mm. expressive people yeah um if you can tap into that but yeah like i have never had a, a, a case like that um i do think through explanation and just speaking about your intention yeah you know what i mean that mm. that could be fine but yeah i mean i'm sure it stopped right off the yeah, yeah, you yeah. Pull it definitely. down and stuff. So. Yeah, I mean, you move on, carry yeah, on, you know, carry on, <laughs> buy some more art. <laughs> exactly, you know, move on to the next thing. So, how did like, how did that? What or what was like your first big client? You know, what I mean? uh, my first big client was okay. Well, originally, before I started blacksmith, my first big client was uh, KFC. Oh, nice. Um, no, but blacksmith. Let's but as blacksmith, blacksmith, yeah. So blacksmith was a trend. Ogilvy has the KFC account. Correct, it's correct. Probably still to the but today. no, but this was actually when I left Ogilvy. Oh really? That, yeah. Oh nice. It was. Okay. Um, yeah, it was a actually super interesting. Um, it was yeah. There was an artist, Kuli Chan at the time, um, with the Streetwise Three, and um, oh, um, we we were sort Can't of can't be in the podcast. <laughs> yeah. You're we were involved. Guest. We were involved in bringing the artist, and he even did his own track to it and stuff. And it was oh, actually nice. quite a dope piece that, mm. till today, everyone remembers that uh, 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 video. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, uh. you know, they remember the the KFC ad more than the actual music video, which is quite <laughs> crazy, you know, quite interesting. Yeah. It was sort of a proof of concept, um, mm. and that you can get budget for these things. Yeah. Um, but the original client and shout out Nick, you know who you are. Um, funny enough, he's at KFC now. Wow! But uh, Castle yeah. Lights, Castle Lights oh, was okay. our game changer, definitive client, and really allowed us to tap into culture with budget and to understand how that that whole world works. And yeah. also ambitious brand, like mm. how we are and how we still are till today. Um, yeah, at the time, I mean, I would say culturally the strongest, the most relative brand in the country, and yeah. got to do the most epic epic stuff you know from yeah. shooting travis scott in paula kwane <laughs> at the Light unlocks to you know um i had to prompt you you know like how we're doing an interview now yeah. well the interview a podcast i had to an interview with sway oh shit. you know because yeah, the cool interviewer fun. was stuck in traffic and i was kind of the only guy who knew hip-hop yeah. i guess because i love my hip-hop but um oh. yeah you know yeah. stuff like that and working with massive talented artists you know sure it's i mean even post malone when they were down, Meek Mill, that was the last one we did. Um, yeah. But yeah, just showing the influence of what a brand can do in culture and how to tap into various silos and different themes. Yeah. You know, those are the strategic things that we take for granted. But things mm. such as how music, fashion, art, experience. It's intertwined if you really think about it. Literally all, you know, like they really, really taught us that. And how does it work in the real world? Yeah. And how much of a village or a team does it take to pull it off, you know? Yeah. It's really, it's really a big village and team to pull it all off. If you really think about it, massive, um, massive. Talking about the whole village and and team behind it, how do you manage? You know, because we are blacksmith, <coughs> block boy and friends, um, the art. You know, um, the obsidian champagne. Now, you know, how do you? Because it's a lot to take on. You know what I mean? And for myself, like I think about it as well. That's why I even said earlier in the podcast, like kind of, not kind of, you inspired me because. I looked at it and I was like, are you really doing enough? <laughs> you know, like, are you really putting enough work? You so could maybe do like a little bit more. How do you find time in your day like to, so to do everything <laughs> and still have a life? Yeah, that's actually like, you know, I've always been relatively balanced in life, you know, since growing up where mm. it's just about that thing of you put in the hard work, a result will come out of it. So like always like, constantly got a chip or at least do something you know mm. to me even if it's small progress it's it's more than what wasn't done you know yeah, 100%. so so using that mindset and i live by this thing called and for me a game changer i call it the two minute rule if something physically takes you time wise two minutes to do just do it then mm. you'll see like from a response to an email sending a quick quote or getting something out the way or forwarding a file it literally Quick. changes a lot right um or to like checking something. Um, obviously easier said than done, but that helps. But in terms of the balance thing is, I just make sure that I have at least one to two touch bases on each, let's call it um, business, if you wanna look at it like that. Um, because they also sort of all feed into each other and like have learnings from each other, such as 
you know, the content side is teaching me how to better create the content for this one or how to better create the narrative for that one. Mm. And then it's kind of like, okay, cool. But then the website of this one taught me how to run the websites and the socials of this one. So like there's all learnings and understanding and it's all also like allows you to like fine tune each of them. Mm. But Mm. I try at least once a week, I have weekly statuses with my various teams that at least I know I'm definitely touch base Touch, touching base on, you know, um, at least, you know, the, 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 the businesses, you know, at least once a week. And then you also prioritize it in terms of, okay, cool, do I have a launch? Do I have to meet a deadline or whatever? Then in that week, that one gets a little bit more attention. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and, and then like just sort of sticking to it. I know some people use the percentage thing, yeah. 50% yeah. a day. Th- and I'm like, for me personally, it doesn't really work like that because like I'll have a day that it was a, su- a successful block boy day yeah. But it wasn't necessarily, you know, busy on blacksmith or I didn't really get to touch that work. So yeah. if you can sort of find like a, a root, you can't really say routine, but a, balance. Like, yeah, sort of a mm. balance like that. But just like hold yourself accountable to yeah. like, don't just be like, oh, I only talk, touch that business a week later because yeah. that's where you're going to lose time and, you know, have so much to catch up on that you're always going to essentially play in catch up. Um, yeah. So there's that. And then the other way of keeping balance, funny enough, is you have to force certain things. Mm. And something that I've really been since moving to Cape Town is I don't compromise on if I need to go for a run or I need to do something of physical activity or just to go get a coffee or to just go, you know, just do something for yourself. That really helps because you can also get so stuck and so like because you're so busy that you land up, oh shit, I was at my desk this morning it's already end of day, I'm still behind my desk. Because the thing is when you go out and you take these pauses and you do these certain things, generally for your health or for yourself, you're actually resetting and it's actually Mm. giving you that that breakaway to think. A little extra boost for the day. It's a boost, but for me, it's also like, that's where I think about the problems or how I solve things or how do I deal Mm. with certain elements. It's like, because if I'm still behind my desk, it's like, oh. I can't really think 100% about this. Yeah, you're replying to oh emails shit, sending yeah, I have to worry about the next merge drop of Blockboy, yeah. but I'm dealing with a problem on, you know, Stella, a yeah. <laughs> brief that we, or, you know, thing that we just shot. So, yeah, yeah. you know, or, or, or something that we're doing a Nike shoot tomorrow and it's like, oh shit, but Obsidian needs to launch, you know? So like, yeah, yeah. but when you go for your run or you go for, you know, and you, I do the cold water mm. stuff, whatever, it's just like, you're there, then it's almost like because you're away from the environment, you actually process mm. um, and that gives you clarity because I also often find you can get lost in a little bit um, like muddled in, in your work. Overwhelmed as well. With Overwhelmed like as well if you can't handle pressure I yeah. mean, because naturally there's always going to be pressure but you know sometimes it will take you like three hours to do something simple but when you take that pause that break you can come back and like okay I'll, I'll hit this out in yeah. an hour or yeah. in half an hour so yeah. so yeah so don't compromise on those things like mm. Take care of yourself as well. Somehow it comes into the work and allows you to handle. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and to be also very honest, it's also quite possible. Like, yeah, I still, I mean, as much as we're doing three different things, like we're actually always doing more, funny enough. So mm. just, it is possible. Yeah, you just got to do something. Yeah, I've realized from my own personal experience, um, you know, there's, there is time. You know, we just like to make excuses. We like to say like ah you know i've had a long day i can't go to the gym yeah can't go to for a, for a run i'm tired correct i was saying this to a friend the other day i was saying to him okay cool what if you go to the gym train for 30 minutes you're telling me you're not going to feel better yeah after going T- totally you're going to feel so much better you're going to have more energy so when you get home let's say you get home at eight o'clock yeah you're going to have those that endorphin boost and stuff like that from training you gonna get. You can still get shit done. It, it definitely is a big one of yeah. people is you know the mindset and discipline, because what's the problem when we haven't done it since school or whatever? Mm. We all want to get back into the gym. Cool. I go at a hundred and ten percent, twenty percent. I can't walk for two weeks or a week. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not gonna get back into it. Yeah, of course. You know definitely. what I mean. And that's the that's the biggest issue that we I'm do. Go deadlift two hundred kilos right? first on day my back. first time. I fucking pull my back or some <laughs> shit, and it's like no, or I injure myself. One hundred percent. It's like. It really is that thing of discipline of like, just do a little bit, little bit, you get stronger, you get going like, you know, you're not gonna run a marathon on your first yeah, time, but 100%. get your 1K out the way, then your mm. three, then your five, yeah. then your 10. 
exactly. you're not going to go from zero to ten of your first one. Obviously, 100%. your body's going to be like, what? Yeah, what's you're going gonna on? You're going to panic and shut down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it so. also goes back to, like I said it earlier with the whole creative blocking thing, don't put pressure on it. Yes. Just do it. Correct. You know I mean, don't put pressure on it. Don't be like, oh, I haven't done this. I haven't gone to gym. I haven't gone. To just go. Mm. So you know you haven't gone to gym. Cool. We've cleared that out the way. Just go. Yeah. I mean, you haven't worked on Block Boy or whatever or on Valpre or whatever. Just do it then. Yeah. And also, you know like, mean? be smart with it. Like, mm. do you know how many times, and I love it actually, I'll go to like my gym session and stuff between 11 and 1 during the day. Mm. Like, if I don't have meetings or I have my meetings in the morning, take that time. You know, we all worry and eat lunch behind our desks or whatever i mean corporate life or wherever or living in the shop it's like hey it's my lunch time or whatever but trust me that that's you know i call it the sneaky middle day sesh it actually goes a long way or 100%. because it's that thing again like if you look at numbers in over a year those little half an hour here or that little hour in that middle of the day it's gonna have it to a month exactly it's gonna <laughs> have a much bigger effect and impact 100%. um so yeah very important i think one thing I want to touch back on um, yes. <laughs> is the soccer. How did that, you know, oh, that was a big passion. That was the yes. dream. Um, how did that go? I heard that you went, I think you played for Moritmo, wasn't no, no, it? No, National. National. Uh, yeah, we don't okay. like Moritmo, just putting it out there. They're the rivals. <laughs> <laughs> National, oh, guys, it's, it's, in, it's the one in Shupana, Madeira, Shupana, right yes, at the, the one in the mountain. Oh, guys, yes. you must see the stadium. Yeah. It is insane. It's literally in a mountain. Like it is in the mountain. And sometimes when the, you know, the fog, well, they call it the Nevoedo, yeah. comes over, you can't even see the other side of the pitch. Mm. So there was times that like, we, like obviously as kids, they'd make us train. We like, can't even see my mates. And we'd run, like, guys would literally run into each other. Like, <laughs> they're in the mountains. Um, How was that for you? Like, like what was age awesome. were you there? So 17 till just before my 21st. So three, just under three and a half years. Um, it was amazing. Like if I look at, you know, the chapter, a chapter in the book of my life mm. definitely is a chapter on its own and very big and important, you know, like, yeah, like learning as, you know, left home, I was sort of now alone back in Madeira on the island, you know, um, and, and the I would say, in the, well, I was in Funchal, <laughs> luckily, you okay, know, in the, yeah, least. I mean, that's where <laughs> the team is and stuff, but I guess the point of like, you have to grow up very quickly. You're alone. You're there. Uh, obviously, you have like your family and stuff. But you know, I was not with yeah, my actual alone. parents and stuff. Um, and also, you know, I'm, I'm I was actually I'm South African Portuguese, mm. so it's like I am the the tourist there or yeah. the stranger there. Yeah. So in the you're beginning, not the local. <laughs> yeah, definitely not the local. Although, like, because I was born there, I always felt like it. But yeah. Anyways, the point is. It was an amazing experience in terms of like I can say I had the taste of what it means to be a professional footballer, which was a dream in its own right. And at the time I didn't get it, but you know, I mm. I tore my groin, had an injury, which funny enough oh, was was strange because I'd never had any injuries before. But mm. if I have to look at it now and I look at the learning, it's it just it wasn't my path yeah. and what, where it was meant to be. But I can say, you know, I got to experience it and I'm a very present person. So mm. when I was there at the time I mean, yeah, guys, I got to meet and play football with some legends, some amazing people that, like, yeah. it also showed me how small the world is. Oh, know? yeah, definitely. Um, and, 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 like, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I'll tell you a story of when you start playing well, because I was in the juniors team, you know, they take you to the first team. So started playing with the first team, you know, going to trainings and stuff. And at the time, the goalkeeper was, funny enough, Diego Bernaglio who's the Swiss national goalkeeper, Damn. right? And then there was Hilario also who was there, who was, he went to Chelsea yeah. you know, when Mourinho yeah, went yeah. that time. But at the time, Benaglio was the main goalkeeper, whatever. And training with the side, we're playing, you know, friendly games and like, it's like my second or third training, play the game, uh, training with them. And in that game, I scored two goals against them. And like, you know, the captain of the team was this badass dude from Argentina, I'll never forget. Also like skilled him and stuff. And it was just like, you know, you really think to yourself like, wow, I've got this. I'm this 18 year old kid <laughs> and like, you know, I'm yeah. about to be freaking Ronaldo, you know? <laughs> I am and Ronaldo. Yeah, no, for real. <laughs> I mean, and he was from Nacional, obviously. Yeah, exactly. So, so it was like, score the goals, like, you know, mindset is, is all over, like, is like so inspired, so like, you know, this rush. And that weekend, it's uh, international qualifiers for the Euros or for the World Cup, I think. I think it was Euros and England versus um, Switzerland. Ooh, and there goes, damn. Beckham goes, scores a penalty against Benaglia. And I'm like, 
What? Make him only scored one. I scored two. two. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the point I was just yeah. like, wow, this is like something really that like mm. it's like you're there. You yeah. know, you're sort of there. And you know, the time that FC Porto came down to play at Chupana, and obviously it's our stadium, we were there, but I'm in the locker room and it's like, you know, I got to meet Kurajma, I got to meet Pepe, uh, uh, Vitor yeah. Bahia when he was coming out, was still the goalkeeper there, and you're like what you know, fine, I was just on? one of the subs on the bench, but the point was just yeah, like, wow, matter. this is like icons that, you know, they, they're oh, greeting you. you to them, yeah. Exactly, they're greeting you in the tunnel and like, you know, everyone's obviously in the, the fucking ski pants and shit because after the game, you're like, what? Like, this just happened. So, yeah, that's crazy. You know, I can say it was definitely there and, you know, I got to experience it nearly the highest I could have, yeah. I guess. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, it was everything and mm. it taught me a very important lesson in life at the time where, because obviously once I had my injury and I wasn't a part of it, you know, went through a bit of a downer and, you know, yeah, you question naturally. God and stuff and like, oh, why, why me? And, yeah. you know, but it just, you know, took me a while afterwards to learn that it wasn't my path mm. because, yeah, definitely. and this is another crazy story, how I knew film was my path was our first big, I don't like to say this, but our first big over half a million rand campaign like the expensive one, yeah, was with the SABC who were doing the Carling uh, label black, uh, Carling black label black cup, label cup yeah. which is cheese versus pirates, and they needed to do the commercial for it. And at the time, you know, funny enough, Steve Compella, who used to be my coach back in the day, had just been signed for Chiefs, and I actually played football with, you know, he's the marketing director. I'm not going to say his name of um, Orlando Pirates right now, but also a good friend of mine, and you know. Brands were trying to get the job, were trying to, you know, when you're just coming up and it was a bit of a pitch thing. And because I knew the coaches and, you know, the, the guys from my football days on both sides, mm. I was able to make some calls and we got on in front of them, whatever, and we won the pitch and so and so. And the day of shooting and at set is we shot at F&B Stadium. Mm -hmm. And as a football player, I never got to walk onto the pitch or pl as a player, yeah. you know. But that morning, I'll never forget, it's like five in the morning, half past five, I'm walking out the tunnel to go, you know, we're about to start set, call yeah. time. Fucking, you know, missed on the, like a real yeah, yeah. surreal moment. And I walked onto it and I was like, okay, so yeah. I guess I was supposed to walk on here as a, I guess, filmmaker or, yeah. you know. A creative. And as a creative. Yeah. And and that's when it, when it hit Kinda me that, hit. you know what, yeah. football has a place. And till today, it's still a thing yeah. in, in, in your life, but it wasn't meant to be. Yeah, it wasn't the thing. It wasn't mm. the, the thing because from that, you know, the content and the shoot that we've have been able to do because of football is, I mean, I got to work and party and be out with Samuel Etu in Barcelona, in yeah. you know, Tanzania, in, uh, Michael Essien, Ian Wright, Roberto Carlos, John Terry yeah. in Nigeria. You met the greats and, and it's like, And that was ball. through film <laughs> yeah, and I didn't film. ever get to play football with them. So yeah. it also shows you like, guys, I know it's, it's hard at sometimes when you don't rea realize mm. and recognize something, but yeah. you know, Everything kind of like happens for a reason. It's that old everything. saying, everything happens for a reason. It does. And you trust know, the process yeah, also. I was literally about to say that. Just trust, you know, that everything is going to be okay at the end. Believe in yourself. Keep working just as hard as what you did in football uh, with everything else. Yeah, And, uh, and, and sports also teaches you some great things. Mm, discipline. Uh, discipline, mm. teamwork, also pressure. People mm. underestimate, you know, pressure of you got to go score the winning goal yeah. or the penalty when it's 1-1 one, one and it's yeah. for the final. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know. What are you, what are you going through there? It's no. It's and I've, I've been that guy. I've, I've won and I've also missed before. So oh, I'm just course, saying. It's definitely, like, definitely. And then also how to bounce back from yeah. when we're going mm. through a dipper. Yep. That's a big one that sport also can teach you. you yeah, know? definitely. So, uh, yeah. Kind of like a deep question, but I like asking this. Um, both in terms of like business and your like you personally, yes. how do you define like success? Success. Yeah. So, okay. So in terms of business, obviously you can see like um, how you've taken something and managed to like have grown something or the impact a business has had, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that for me is definitely, you know, from going from one store to like, you know, I know stories of three stores to a hundred stores nationwide mm. yeah. or, or like, this specific brand or your specific business has like really helped transform a community or change a community, you know, especially in the art space. You get a lot of, yeah. you know, anchor, I call them anchor sort of, um, sure, 
like platforms within communities that you know be it an art gallery space or or a local gym or something like mm. there's a lot of that 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 is out there yeah and then in terms of personal success is you know being the best version of yourself you know there's that saying real recognizes real mm. and i feel like r- real honest people can also feel and sense the energies around and 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 can also you know sense that okay this person is special in their own right yeah um and to me that is a definition of success of you're constantly and willing willing yeah. to evolve and to and to you know let go of your ego and constantly adapt to better yourself because yeah. we have to constantly learn as much as we are the best at what we do at a certain level you can always, you can always learn do you know what i'm saying you can, you can always, always keep learn. going or learn something else always. like you know you can like, always better yourself exactly like very few i believe very few people start new hobbies we mm. sort of like okay cool this is my career i'm a lawyer an accountant or an artist yeah. And, and I just get, me. and then I just get better at doing that, which yeah. I mean, it's cool. But you can also like get Challenge better at doing yourself. other things and constantly elevating. So I think, to me, that is a definition of success and um, a person who's also just respectful. Mm. I think that's yeah. that's that that that's a big one. Like because you get given success, you get luck success. I guess you get the yeah, hard work yeah, success. Yeah. Um, but it's also in the way that you project your success and. Also, yeah, you in, handle yourself as a person. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, you just don't have to be an asshole. Yeah, like, 100%. Right? 100%. Like, <laughs> I've like, always had this saying, like, not really a saying, but it's, you know. Life motto. Yeah, it's like, I, I always say to myself, like, okay, I get sick. You get sick, right? Um, if you get cut, you're going to bleed. If I get cut, guess what? I'm going to bleed. Yeah. Cool. So it goes down to all those basic things. We're all the same, pretty much. The way I treat same way i'll treat a guy that's pushing a trolley you know it's, it's the same thing we're all human beings regardless yeah. of anything else we're all human beings and we all deserve a little bit of respect at least you know yeah I mean? no, re- re- respect that. costs nothing costs nothing yeah, it literally dude. does and to your point yeah. anyone i mean it's, it's quite funny like people will remember two things the respectful guy and the asshole 100 percent and I'd rather be the other 50. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, and I'd love to carry on, but we're going to have to wrap up fairly soon. I have one, well, Katie had a question. Yes. Um, any advice for the youth? Yeah. And mandem. <laughs> oh, and <laughs> Ex- mandem. <laughs> exactly how you would. All right, fam. <laughs> um, young fams. <laughs> <laughs> Are you mad, bruv? Yeah. <laughs> Are you mad, isn't it? Um, advice is, you know, I... I I like to say the progress thing and the never giving up of like, trust me, you, life is going to challenge you. Um, people are going to challenge you. There's always going to be the non-believers and the sad reality is that it's always going to be harder than easier. Oh, so wow. if you, you know, just keep chipping away and believe in yourself and like, you got to back yourself. Mm, I love, I, I love you that you what just I'm saying? said that. If, like, if you don't back yourself, the sad reality from yeah. your family to your business partner to sometimes even your your partner, your wife yeah. or your your person. Like there'll be times where they'll even challenge you the most and question you the most. And you're like, you always gotta back yourself um and just constantly keep chipping away and and, and never give up because you know that like they say, if you never give up, it's gonna force some results. And that's better than nothing. So hundred percent. You know, just keep doing it and then also just be willing to learn. Yeah. Um, and even when you get your success, just always watch the ego because ego and success tend to grow together. Mm, mm. Just always keep an eye on that one that you don't want it to get too much to a point because we've all been at the point of, oh, I'm top of the world. Yeah. I know I everyone. I'm that guy. I'm the, <laughs> I'm the, you know, I know this celebrity or this model and, and like, and it's cool. Yeah. yeah. But, but um, in the bigger picture. Yeah. Just, just, just keep an eye on the ego and I think you should you should be fine. But other than that, also like if you're like me that you like uh you don't like it when people say no it can't be done, like yeah. fuck it. Yeah, let's, it can let's, be done. What do you mean it can't be done? Yeah, let's let's tell me it can't know, be done. At least I tried my best, but hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. Um where can we find you? Social media? Oh, snap that. Um yeah, so on, on my socials, um so it's at Diogo eight oh eight. Um I'm not gangster or anything, just eight is my number. Um and 
88s wasn't available, so I went 808s until I realized. I thought that was a hip hop turn. There is that too. There's 808s and the, you know, you know and the drums the good and, and, old and, and the bass and the 808s. <laughs> um, I know sometimes people assume I'm a sound producer, yeah, producer but, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, just pure eight. Um, yeah. It's my my number, okay, infinity, cool. all of that. So eight yeah, eight guys, you'll go eight or eight. Um, and yeah, please check out at Blockboy and Friends or N Friends. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be doing some interesting stuff. Definitely, I'm looking forward to it. It's so, gonna be really cool. Um, again, thank you so much for just taking the time, dude. Like yeah, I really thank do you for having me. It. Um, Katie, if you could be so kind and please get Diogo's gift. It's in my. Oh, backpack. wow, this gift. <laughs> I told you, you thought I was joking. I really do have a gift for you. Nice, nice. Um, no, no, the backpack. The basket <laughs> one. Uh, I think it's in the room there. Um, yeah, it's like, a, like I said to you earlier, this is really something I'm passionate about. Yeah. It's not just a podcast. It's it's an opportunity for me to get to connect with people that inspire yes. me. And you, you know, get to connect with people that I, I look up to, you know. Um, and I'm passionate about this. I really do like. I enjoy doing this. Yeah, um, I enjoy being creative, and this is a simple thing for me. Like, it gets. Oh, wow. I get to express myself creatively by. Yes. You know, offering oh, you nice. this gift. So Thank you, my brother. There wow. you go, dude. I hope you like it. The packaging um, is. I, I've got to open it. No, of for course, the cameras. Please open 100%. it. Hundred um, percent. You can put the mic down. Don't stress. Um, so yeah, this is just a little something. It it was meant to be actually foiled, but the foiling machine. Uh, issues blah 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 all that stuff i was meant to have a handwritten card so you can flip it over um oh, so yeah just a little something maybe put in your office that's one day. fucking cool know. hopefully you like it i was yeah. meant to have a card as well but then no, again bro, this is yeah <laughs> first official podcast this is nice. definitely going on the stand yeah so that's i, I didn't want to put all cool. of them that's why you'll see uh, <laughs> i like Diogo. the zap there's a little zap on you just so that you guys know <laughs> <laughs> um very yeah, cool. that's the thing. I didn't want to put like we are blacksmith uh, oh. and 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 and. No, so this is perfect, bro. It's I hope you like it, dude. And once oh, everything else you. is sorted, thank the you. cards and stuff, I'll definitely be shipping something down to um, Cape Town in terms of that. And we'll have one little thing that we'll we'll wrap up with. But yeah, thank you again. Um, thank you. Something small, but yeah. And Shout as out. I always do, thank you guys. Thank you very much for just watching. And if you've stayed this far, like I really do, like appreciate it. Um, please just subscribe. That's all. Like I'm and subscribe, you. guys. Like, like and subscribe. It's, it's gonna cost this man you is nothing. onto something. <laughs> it's really gonna cost you nothing. It's gonna cost you your time. But thank you, guys. I really do appreciate you taking your time. This is a bit of a longer episode, but I appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had a good time. Um, Cape Town is starting to get a bit dark. I think we're gonna go have a good time now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Peace, guys. Thank you. Ciao. Thank you. Much love. Thank you, brother. That good. Ciao. Good. Thank you. Not good.